Hello, everyone. In this video, I want to tune into Mars and Venus moving through Aquarius. There are a couple interesting things to point out. So they're new to Aquarius, and also Venus is just now separating, beginning to pick up speed, and just about to move beyond a degree from Mars. They've been moving together for a very long time, and Venus in particular has been in Capricorn for about a quarter of a year. So it's worth to note the energetic difference, what's unfolding when you move from a very strong period of Capricorn into Aquarius. This will be useful, useful to think about. And I'll establish that and then I'll speak more to what's happening in this Aquarius journey in my view. Capricorn really speaks to our conscious relationship to the physical parameters of this human life. How are we in relationship to time? What are the structural realities that we've created? How is it working? Is it functional? Is it working? What are the agreements? How we conditioned our patterns, our thinking, our way of being? How much of this is based on precedent, things we've learned that we've adopted, but is it functional? Is it really working for where we want to go? We really assess our inner reality. Is it producing the essential effects that we're seeking to experience here in this human life? So we learn to condition realities through discipline and effort arrived, derived from self-reflection and deeper wisdom to build a life that's deeply relevant, that is really going to nurture and create a ground, a foundation for the kind of growth that we most want. And it reaches every part of our life, cardinal earth, really establishing a firm, clear foundation for what we're doing and why we're doing it and what kind of efforts are necessary. So Capricorn is deeply introspective. It just brings us to take greater self-responsibility to address all areas of our life and live in alignment. So this has been huge with Venus going back and forth over Pluto, this Venus retrograding Capricorn, really connecting to our values or worth, bringing a lot of self-awareness into our relationships, how we're behaving, what our needs are, what our values are in life, what we need to do to achieve them. It really says there is an element of effort that is needed on this soul journey. And Capricorn says, without adequate wisdom and insight into the work that is needed, where we need to cultivate ourselves, we won't get there. So there's a gravity of, of awareness that can be deeply humbling when we realize it is truly up to us to use our time wisely. When we move into Aquarius, we're not dealing with form, we're not dealing with time. Aquarius reflects the intelligence of creation. And there are two things that I want to say about this first. We can look at all of reality from an Aquarian point of view and just see archetypes, fractally manifesting on every size scale. So where there is a relationship, a body, a name, uh, a role, um, a manifestation of anything happening within time and space, Aquarius, we are stepping back to see more objectively what's happening archetypally. We see the energetics underneath the drama of this human experience. And I always offer the example, it's like pulling a tarot card and seeing that all of these symbols are pointing to archetypal energies at play here. And these are universal energies. That's what astrology is about. When you look at a chart, we're just looking at these archetypal energies dancing, manifesting within and without. So we look at life and we have that perspective. And thus, physical reality isn't taken as literally. And in fact, the human drama of our life, there's the possibility with Aquarius to really see what's going on in a very impersonal way. The moment something is personal, it's, con it's really reflecting back our own conditioning. For anything to be personal references the past, references our story, the very nuanced intricacies of our personality, our self-concept, what we think about life, where what we think are, what we think things are, who we think we are, and where we think things are supposed to go. The personal experience is very subjective, and there's generally a lot of control. When we are in a more impersonal place, it doesn't mean I'm just giving an example of kind of what we cultivate in Aquarius. It doesn't mean we won't feel things, but the the development, the cultivation, the, the, the evolution within the Aquarius archetype 
is to cultivate the observer mind. Thus, we're not attaching to or identifying with the stimulus of life experience. We're observing it. And in that observation, we can actually see what are the patterns beginning to emerge. And this is the second piece here where there is an individuality to creation. Everything wants to, on its own, unfold and blossom and grow into a beautiful ecosystem that reflects the harmony of all of these archetypes. I often say that the, the intelligence of creation itself is a reflection of the mind of God, so to speak. And there are no contradictory thoughts. All the archetypes exist. Everything in creation at the core is an ecosystem that is living in harmony. The, the nature of creation, the intelligent design of creation isn't in conflict with itself. It's a very powerful thing to understand. That's why Aquarius corresponds to friendliness or being friendly. In my insight into that, it's, it's in my experience, it's really this beautiful way of recognizing a, a greater appreciation that we're all here and that we all belong. And so the gesture of being kind, the gesture of getting along with each other, and holding a space of giving and sharing really reflects this idea that all the individualities of creation in being themselves resonate and give and meet and harmonize with all the other individualities in being itself. And you don't have to try to do anything for that to happen. Resonance happens according to the laws of the universe. Resonance and harmony is the foundation. And that can be difficult for our minds to really comprehend because we're so conditioned in this world at this time to identify, to believe in these very Newtonian, physical, black and white ways of thinking. But that's not really how it goes. And so the more we free ourselves up to recognize there is a blossoming of all things according to its own individuality, coming into perfect harmony and resonance with all of creation, that this is really a friendly universe. And the thing that's scary about that relative to the journey within Aquarius is all of our conditioning. Well, if I am really myself, if I let go of the control, if I let things be impersonal, if I stay an observer, if I don't attach to my story, what will happen? What will change? What will I lose? Will I lose my friends? Will I be rejected? Will I be the outsider? Will I not be understood anymore? Because the the tension within Aquarius often is the seeming ramifications of being what we are, of freedom, of not trying to fit into a construct and actually freeing from that. We often are afraid because that will reflect the world we've known, everything we've known, the life we live, the status quo, and what's beyond the threshold of the known is not something we could know. That's the thing about Aquarius. It's the true objectivity of, of liberating from the story and following resonance really means being what we are, which is not self-conscious. It's not self-conscious. It's not thinking, I am this. It's just being that. And thus, it is, in fact, a self-revelatory experience. And in fact, the unfolding of community and friendship and resonance itself is a self-revelatory experience. It just happens. And it's so essential to understand that point. We, we don't make these things happen. We follow the flow and the current of our own being, which synchronistically is in perfect resonance with the flow and the being of everything and everyone. But that might look different than the roles, constructs, expectation, precedents that we've set and that others or ourselves might expect of ourselves. And this is where we often have those Aquarian shocks that will you know, maybe be a seemingly shocking or surprising event or experience that shakes us out of what? The status quo. And oftentimes there's a threshold beyond that that we are to open to and trust. So when we have a lot of strong activity in Aquarius, there is a movement towards that greater objectivity. And I would say also a greater curiosity and openness towards what is, what is. And that stance of openness is an incredibly freeing and relaxing place to be because it keeps a little bit of space from the seeming drama of all the things that maybe we don't know 
or that we don't understand or that feel very personal or feel or that feel yet unresolved or all the work we're doing in Capricorn um, and and where we just feel like we might be so conditioned by the, the, the rules, the work. Aquarius brings us this wedge of spaciousness where we can say, hmm, I wonder what's happening here. If I don't control it and I'm just being myself, and yet we're still doing our work with Capricorn, but we have to make sure we're not holding on so tightly to our ideas of what we should be to the point where it becomes a point of suppression of our own individuality. So if I'm letting go of this control, what happens? What begins to unfold? So let's look at the chart here and we'll delve a little more deeply. I have Mars and the Ascendant. Let's look at these planets. They're going to be moving forward. The first important piece here is that they're moving to a square to Uranus, which is the ruler of all this Aquarius. It happens basically from March 18th um, Venus does it, and then we have, you know, Mars in the 21st. So There's like a good week where Venus and Mars are approaching and moving through a screw with Uranus. That's very potent. This can easily speak to an attention where we're feeling the calling of our self, capital S, the calling of our higher self, which is another way of saying our individuality, the, the nature of life itself, um, calling itself forward and it doesn't concern itself with our conditioning with our story of who we are or our story of where we're going it is this very um organic unfolding of life organizing itself according to its nature where it feels like there's stress and in particular where where that impulse for rebellion right um, breaking free, because this often happens as a result of suppression, where then we can project onto the outer environment um, all the reasons why we are not compatible with this person, place, thing, experience, whatever. And that's making the mistake of seeing the outside as unhospitable. And one of the issues with Aquarius is and Uranus is where we fall into sectarian thinking. We say, oh, I don't belong there, or these people don't belong to me, that's not my people, or, and, and that's not true. Because remember, these are all archetypes and all of these things that we see live inside of us. And this is where we think we need to um, rebel or react or leave behind. Nothing in, in creation leaves behind. Nothing in creation excludes. It's really just a matter of always being what it is. And then it resonates with what fits. And in fact, the the very consciousness of exclusion or not belonging, I don't belong or you don't belong, it can easily lead to another state of mind that is, in fact, not objective, not impersonal, not, not detached, but very personal. This is where paranoia and these stresses, so the extent to which there may have been suppression or fear of being othered, fear of not belonging, fear of being different. There can be those strong feelings of, you know, I need something more. It's a great opportunity to actually choose more relaxation. One with Mars involved, I think exercising would probably be a great practice for us in general, um, because there's a lot of energy that wants to move. And you never want to make rash, thoughtless decisions with Mars. But if you're suppressing all of that energy, there's a great possibility and likelihood during that week of just a lot of unhealthy, uh, reactive, um, aggressive kind of dynamics and energies emerging. So channel that energy and the archetype of Mars and Aquarius is sort of like getting in a plane and jumping out of it, right? You're doing something that's exhilarating, it's scary, and you're also high up and you can see things objectively. So our own practices that really gives us a greater view being able to access um, a greater perspective from the seat of our consciousness. That can be very helpful. And maybe trying new things that on some level is scary. And also relative to our relationships and our values, where does energy want to open up? What wants to be spoken? What wants to be communicated? What is it like also to move forward with the assumption of friendliness? 
that life accepts me for who I am. And thus I can think in a way that says where I am and who I am is totally compatible. And that there's total resonance here. Everything belongs in me and all of my relations and everything that I have, there's a total resonance here if I just let it be. And the, the elements that need to shift and move around will. It gets to be a very self-evident realization from a place of objective seeing because we're appreciating that this is a friendly game here. So this is a very powerful, very exciting, very invigorating time period. And it's just really meaningful if we can ground ourselves in a state of clear seeing and remember too that everything that we're seeing out there is also happening in there. And that's also an invitation not to take the signs literally, right? Be it the symbols or the synchronicities. To, to interpret things literally is again like interpreting the tarot card as, oh no, I'm gonna die, I gotta do something about that. These are all archetypal energies that are freeing themselves up. So there's a great opportunity to really grow more into ourselves and for us to grow more into ourselves together. Um, if we hold it with that perspective that there's actually a, a, a great opening happening here. And this is just the beginning. You keep on moving. They joined, you know, this is the third transit, by the way, between Venus and Juno. Um, since Venus went retrograde, we, have, we had one in Sag, one in Capricorn. Now we have one in Aquarius. And they joined Saturn. Right? So towards the end of March and into April, Mars and Venus joined Saturn and also square the nodes. And then soon thereafter, Saturn will also square the nodes. So this brings us back to the Capricornian Saturn. And this is where there can also be this strong stress or this depression. I'm not moving where I want to go, or I feel like something structural, essential needs to change. This is calling an immense amount of wisdom and self-reflection. Who am I really? What do I really want? And what do I need to claim responsibility for? You know, the, the, the metaphor is like if you're in, a, 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 you're in school with a group of kids and everyone, every day they're playing these sports games and, you know, you play sports with them, but you just don't like playing sports with them. This is, this transit is akin to what are my genuine interests? What do I love doing? And so you show up one day with your astrology cards <laughs> and you just like set up a little station by yourself studying astrology. And who knows, there might be other kids that want to join you. And maybe there's a fear of being ridiculed, the fear of not being understood, the fear of being the other, of being othered. But are we going to other ourselves? That's the question. Are we going to take responsibility to say, I have to live my life and claim the calling of my own blossoming? The powerful thing about Aquarius is, you know, Jeff Green describes the Uranus archetype as who we are in our most individuated form. Right? It's, it's, it's almost like in, in our awakening, what, what happens when we're not suppressing our own nature, when we're not dealing with all of the, of the repression, all the need to belong and fit in. There's a natural blossoming of our own awakening that is perfect for the design of life. And so there's something that's very freeing and spacious in finding our way. What's my way of being? What am I drawn to? What's my own individuality? This brings us into new relationships, new community, new opportunities that will really grow over this year. Really, this next month is such an essential part of the 2022 trend because it's initiating the Saturn square, which does speak to a greater long-term shift in how we're living, how we're structuring our lives. And it requires a maturity in the ground to face our fears, um, what's not working, what needs to change, how do we take responsibility for this? What does it look like to claim um, our joy and to structure our lives around that? So those are some reflections for this cycle. Thank you for watching.